Hey guys, welcome to another session of Epic 7. This is gonna be a video basically pulled from my stream VOD. So again, if you are on Twitch and you happen to pass by, definitely say hi. Um, join in the conversation or whatever conversation that we're having on that day. Um, but specifically this VOD, I felt that it was, like, after thinking about it, after having the discussion, I thought it was pretty productive. So I myself, you know, I've been playing Epic 7 for three years. I feel kind of burnt out and it's not really just like, you know the game is kind of repetitive but there are certain things especially in pvp and characters released there's like power creep and all that stuff and wherever you are in the game you might not feel exactly the same way but regardless i i just basically needed uh, a mental break um, um but i still love the game i still play it i still grind it uh but this vod i i thought i was the only one kind of feeling it but this vod um ended up having like a lot of people kind of chime in and I think everybody's feeling around the same thing. Um, if you're a newer player watching this, you probably won't have the context. Um, I feel that the frustration or the burnt outness <laughs> is really a buildup of players who have been playing for you know maybe two or even all three years. Uh, um, and I don't think it's like Epic Seven is still a really good game, um, but really it's about like the characters that they have released, the overpowered overpowered characters. And then, uh, so this VOD really is just kind of like bouncing ideas off each other. Like what, what could Smog get do to fix it? Regardless, it's more of just like an open conversation. I don't think this is going to persuade Smog to do anything, to be honest, or Epic 7 to do anything, uh, but it is an interesting one. So if you're just watching this, it is really just conversation. It really is me talking. Um, but uh, the stream chat ha have like a lot of ideas, a lot of thoughts. Um, but yeah, it's kind of just like an open, open video. Um, so if you if you are watching, I hope you enjoy it. Uh, I know it's a long one, um, but I hope it's useful. And if you have ideas or feedback or comments, I mean, leave it into the comments down below. I'm not an, a Smilegate dev. I can't really do anything, but at least maybe there's another platform where they can read comments and hear your voice or whatnot, whatever. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you guys enjoy. I just know about it because YD made a video of it. It was one of the more recent Summoner War videos. Oh, interesting. No need to ask. Oh, hey, you just found it. Hey, thanks. Okay, let me watch this. I, I swear, next time I should just draw myself with my pants down. Oh my goodness! Gabe, uh, Wait. Raid me, you know? Arrgh. Valkyria, thank you for the raid, bro. I'm doing well. I. Okay, just as you were raiding me, I thought that came from a video. I just clicked a YouTube video. <laughs> and uh, I thought that was. It. I was like, what? Why does this video have my have my voice? I'm like this is amazing. It was a YD video too, so I was like really surprised. And then I look over. Hey, thank you guys. Hey, hey, welcome Raiders, and thank you Valkyrie again. Hope you had a great stream. Okay, so 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 emblem, so emblem. Now I'm watching the the YD video. So it's two players sharing the character pool. It's two characters sharing the character pool. Okay, so so realistically, hold on, wait, one sec, one sec. I'll I'll, I'll share the I'll, I'll I'll share my screen so you guys know what I'm looking at. So it's similar in terms of you can pick him up, but but yeah. So you need communication. You'll need coordination. I think that's kind of cool. I don't think it's going to be a gimmick. It's definitely going to be a game mode some people will like more than others. But it, I think it would be really fun. In terms of like Epic 7's desire to be like kind of... Uh, how do you say it? More official when it comes to like... Wait, what the heck? Why is, oh, right. This is YD's video. <laughs> it, has, it has editing in it. That's right. Game mode is dead. No one playing anymore? Oh, no, no. We're, we're talking about... Um, potentially epic 7 adopting 2v2 rta so i i was asking and uh and one of my viewers emblem took this video and, and basically just so so i'm just seeing how it works yeah mainstream that's the word thank you cold hound twitch yeah so like epic 7 wants to go like mainstream and then with like tournaments and stuff right and i think this sort of format can be very entertaining yeah, I, I, I would definitely say it's it's different enough from RTA. It's using the same 
core mechanics picking banning limited pool or you can only select one character from the pool per character or per player and then turn based right so it, it I, I don't believe it would be too hard to implement it might be harder to like they would have to come up with a different method to show the characters because you you essentially have well depending on how much i guess maybe three three characters each so six characters on screen But the mode is somewhere where it's kind of mad. No incentive to do 2v2, unfortunately, in comparison to the real GA mode. Really? No incentive? So, I mean, I mean, like, let's, let's translate that to Epic 7, right? Like, what's the incentive for players to play the solo RTA? If, if they, if they give similar rewards or even different rewards, like, like different frames or, you know, different backdrops or something like that for 2v2, wouldn't it be the same? Like, same incentive? You don't like RTA as it is. I'm only doing it for rewards. Andrew man mode. Yeah, RTA is not for everyone. Um, I, I'm i mainly doing it for rewards either, too, as well. Um, so you know it will eventually put in. <laughs> we play RTA to BM our friends. I mean, there's a lot of reasons for people to play RTA. The, the 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 good thing about RTA is that obviously there's no entrance fee. An unlimited entry in a gacha game is absolutely it's a luxury. You you're not gonna really find that in mo many games. Um, so this is this is this is what will probably keep Epic Seven alive. The skins are too good. The ML skins are really good. Yeah, they're different quality for sure. I'm not sure about some of the RGB skins. I, I I feel that there's less love into some of them. Yes. I enjoy RT tournaments, non-serious games as the meta is Ellis Stale. Uh, the the bed, I, I I mentioned this before, like the raid uh, to to my my stream chat, but the it's not gonna be better, and it's honestly not Epic Seven's fault. It's just the it's the progression of the game. Like characters keep getting introduced and. Like, old characters that were strong, they're not weak anymore, they're just kind of outdated because you're always going to be chasing those 10 slots, right? Like, the like both players are chasing for 10 heroes, and they're always going to choose whatever is best. And so, unfortunately, there's just going to be characters that are just dropped out, regardless of their, if, they're, if they need buffs or not. It's just, it's just how the way it is, and you're not going to see the meta be better. It's just not going to be, because we just have too many powerful heroes. RB female RTA skin soon. I heard it will be RB waifu skin. Wait, really? Wait, 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 wait. Kai, you said that at the same time? Is there a waifu? No, no way, right? That's... That can't be. Increase PvP to 5v5. I think they're doing reasonably well on updating units. I think they're doing okay to Cold Hound Twitch. My, my, my usual... I, I, I didn't like um I didn't like how they were just like basically buffing, no nerfing, because the power creep is like pretty crazy. But they're actually cornering themselves too because they need to start they basically need to up the ante every single patch note. This is why we have like bad patch notes too. It's just because you like how do you how do you up like the previous batch of limited heroes right like they, it, it, they have an issue that they're trying to solve and by 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 releasing maybe like the hawk and stuff like that they're characters that you could have but that you don't need is a good way to slow it down but it's still going up too fast that's that's it's an it's an issue it's a long-term issue that they'll need to work out i do blame sg for changing the meta so much last season yeah, almost every character was meta, correct? I th uh, if what skin was a joke, I'ma quit. I think SG was able to delay slime collab, things would feel better. We would be playing the same units for last season. Hold on, wait, wait, wait. Cold Town Twitch, you got- Is the power creep crazy? I haven't played other gotchas, but I've heard it's worse elsewhere. Um, power creep is crazy relative to Epic 7. It is. It's it's not it's not you can't you can't compare it to other games. 
um, you could, I guess, and and that's what makes Epic Seven a good game because compared to other games, Epic Seven is a pretty good package all around. Good devs, good game, good engine, no load screens, all that stuff. But compared to Epic Seven itself, it is, it is, it's accelerating. If you don't notice it, you have to really read the tooltips. The tooltips are increasing too quick, um, and each character is deemed bad if it doesn't outdo the other character. So let's say, for example, Ran. Defense Breaker, right? Defense Breaker Strip. Like, he wouldn't have sold if he didn't have a strip. And this, and the base speed. So, like, you basically have to keep topping each character in order to help... In order for players to be like, Oh, this character is great, I'm hyped to pull for it. But then by doing that, you're in, in accelerating the process. And if anything falls under that, then the characters are bad. And the people just don't like them. And they pull them anyways because we wait for buffs. And so basically Epic 7 is in a very, very, it's a very fast accelerating kind of momentum going forward. And that's what I'm talking about the power creep. It's not that the power creep has increased so much, but look at the characters who recently got all their S1s, 1.1 times mod, right? Used to be 0 0.9 and then 1, and it stayed at 1 for a while for most of them. And then now everyone for, for whatever reason has a 1.1 or 1.3, you know, it's crazy. It's crazy. Each time we get a new power creep character, the skill description gets longer. Exactly. That's the thing. How would you fix it though? I think it's a vicious cycle almost all. No, that's, that's the thing. I don't think there's a fix. And that's why I, I, I'm not... I'm only stating all those things as a fact. But I don't have a solution to it. There's basically nothing they can do. Um, yeah, if you, if you guys know my perspective on it, I, I always say that this is an issue, but there's no solution to it. It is inevitable. Unfortunately. The, the only other way would be to nerf, but they're not willing to do that because of potential riots. But, I mean, I mean the good examples would be like, like stuff like League of Legends and even Summoner's War itself. Although I never played Summoner's War, it's just someone who told me on the Summoner's War front, there's been nerfs and buffs. And because players are used to it, they don't complain when it happens. It's still the same thing. You still get... You know characters that are shelved and then some characters are brought out of the out of the bin but it's at least it's more controllable start nerfing rgb unit and give people selector ticket who cares Buff or rework all the characters to counter new meta if they nerf people are going to feel the opposite and say they release the unit is too strong and going to be nerfed sucks all around yeah you're right so 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 that's the thing right like i i like that's my proposal but i don't think it works really <laughs> um at the end of the day i think we just have to suck it up i think what players have an issue with is really the molagora that's costed into the characters that they've invested so for example like like unless you have a really cracked gear assassin kali is still relatively unused um ace is just easier because of the faster base speed but like it's just stuff like that right it's just like you can't get the stuff back so people feel salty if you do nerf a character because then you invested all that potentially money because if you mold a packed so there's no there's no solution there's no pretty way to end it unfortunately and somewhere where it was interesting to see a random buff only to see it was to make the tower harder oh really <laughs> you start lowering player base confidence Money they spent trying to get the hero. Yeah, so that's the other thing though, Chidori. But the thing is, like, from what I've heard is that Summoner's War has nerfs, right? But people pulled and they didn't even have pity. So, like, like, I, I, I honestly, I think it's just maybe just Epic 7 just needs to double down, right? And I think that's what they're doing right now. So I'm not saying that, you know, copying another game is going to make it more successful. Because clearly every single mod... Uh, Every single every single model has issues, but that being said, like, it, like is there a way to slow down? And I think I think honestly the best way to slow down is what Epic Seven has been doing with like characters like Zahawk. Like when Zahawk was released, I was like, he's really good, right? He's pretty good, and the damage he does right, does right now, like we've seen it, it's insane. But he's perfect because you don't need him. That's the thing, right? You don't need him. But like a Rimuru or a Rem at the time, you actually needed, I would say, arguably speaking. Rimuru, I would say more so. They could give coin and I'm also like to... I just spoiled the player base too much. Yeah, so that's, that's... 
If they eventually give the ability to reset a unit every three months, I think it will work well. So one one of the things I was talking about, if if nerfs were allowed, one of my ideas was that they would allow the players to have, let's say, a trial period in terms of you can plus fifteen the character for free, and basically after the trial period, because you spent money on it, or sorry, sorry, trial the character for free, but maybe just not in RTA or something, and then you know after after a certain amount of time, you you'd be like, okay, I want to invest in it, but. Like what what Solid has said is, is true. It's honestly small gate where Epic Seven players have an expectation. So in a way, it's spoiled. But I, I wouldn't say it's spoiled because spoiled sounds like we whine if we don't get our way. But it's really expectation, and that's an issue. That's the issue. Epic Seven started off with this, and now everybody expects to get compensated with a selector, right? Like I, I'm sure like not all of you guys are whiny. Um, so I this is not to mean to you, but like Like I, I've seen that like re remember the whole uh, what's her name? Solitaria thing where it's like oh She was bugged because the Isla violin stripped after or whatever or sorry stripped before the debuffs Everybody was like, oh, let's pull let's pull Solitaria because I'm gonna get compensated But then it turned out that Smilegate just wanted to keep it as a feature Admitting that it was a bug, but they're just gonna keep it and everybody was pissed because they didn't get a selector So that's the kind of mindset that some of the players have and that is the wrong mindset. So <laughs> Yeah, okay fine fine. I mean yeah, sure I, I don't like using the word spoiled as much because I feel it alienates people unnecessarily because I, I think it, yeah, sure. You can you can simplify saying it's spoiled. I, I definitely think it's more of expectations. That's that's an issue. I think. Oh wait, this Ruo keeps reviving. I gotta kill her. I wasn't paying attention. Stove comments, Reddit comments. I mean, you name it. I mean, we all know it's there. Um, it, 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 it's it's not it's not it's not good. But but I think. I think honestly, like, yeah, Epic Seven is, is trying to do their best. And I was saying about this as well. Remember the last EE batch? It was pretty kind of bleh, right? We got the Illinav one with the Elencio one. And it, it ended up just being like pretty much none none of it was really usable. But that's the same that's the same thing as a as a buff, right? Like like how can you expect them to have EEs now, three of them every single time? with balance notes like once a month balance patches once a month and then with releasing new heroes it's just it's so much power so like the expectation for ees or new characters to be bad like you should expect it because if they're all too good then you're just gonna have overwhelming power creep it's too it's too fast real shotgun shogun hey welcome welcome they released too many units too fast and it's going Spiral out of control of power creep and they're gonna kill their own game. There's no downtime for, from new units. Currently they're on it. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if you were here the entire time, but yes, I 100% I agree with what you're saying. This is something I keep on saying like in my YouTube videos and I just mentioned on stream in passing. Jardu hat. Hey man, welcome, welcome. It is. It, it is something that I, I hope they slow it down. Um, but I think honestly, we've just seen like just too many limited heroes. And so, maybe the power creep is more like, like if it's limited heroes, it makes more sense. If it's MLs, I guess it makes some sense. But honestly, like it's just been nonstop. It's been too quick. Um, yeah. But I don't think there's a clean solution to it. I still think, I still think they should implement nerfs, but they should be thinking of a way to make the nerfs make sense. One of my viewers um, mentioned that maybe just say, you know, make an announcement saying that Oh, we're gonna start nerfing after the next month. So, you know, we'll give you a selector one time and that's it. You know, like something like that. But then again, like, you know, I know I know some of you guys are saying that, you know, nerfs are not gonna fix it. And I agree, it, there's pros and cons to both. But I'm just looking at like, like League of Legends has what, 140 characters? 140 or something like that? And, I mean, there's always going to be meta ones, right? But at least nerfing and buffing, even without the introduction of a new character, you'll still be able to, like, play something. I don't know. I don't know. League of Legends is different. It's different, but... 
they can now like you said they set the president there is no downtime at all and if they take any sort of break people will freak out <laughs> yeah if they take a break people are gonna already take i mean there's a lot of players right now that are taking breaks from epic 7 or or feeling burnt out so yeah you're you're kind of right i guess i don't know how they can slow it down anymore anymore the, the the three ees thing when they introduced it in the new uh in the new games year like the the, the anniversary or whatever when they oh what was it no six months ago they were like we're introducing three ees because it's what the people want i was like no that's really bad like can you imagine that that's insane like having to force a deadline with coming out with three ees but you know what just keep the ees <laughs> The thing is, like, players want EEs, right? They want another character to be, like, kind of cool and dust them off. But then the EEs turn out bad, which is good for the longevity of the game, but then players get upset again. <laughs> so it's, 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 yeah, it's really hard. Really hard to balance. Hard enough characters that people pay for. But, but the, the, the thing is, Summoner's War gets away with it, right? So what makes it work for them, right? So that's, 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 that's what I mean. Like there, there has to be a way. It's it, the thing is, we might if Epic Seven ends up doing nerfs, players might leave. The ones that cannot accept it, the ones that can accept it, will still stay, and there's still gonna be new players. It's not gonna kill the game, in my opinion. In not in my opinion. If they do nerf, they better do a big roadmap announcement with statistics and everything. Like for Lost Ark stream a few days ago, they announced nerfs and people weren't even mad. Yeah, so see, see, Rug Dealer, like what you're saying is this, this is, yeah, this is definitely a thing in the video game industry. This is not unheard of, but you're right. It has to be prepared. It has to be well done. And they have to ignore the flack. They can't cave to it, right? But, but this is assuming that the nerf is what's going to solve it. I, I, I think it would slow down what the issue is, but it, it might not solve it. So I, I can't I can't say for sure. But if they were going down that direction, 100%, they need to make like well in advance statements. Lost our being MO is different. Yeah, I think I think it has to be kind of I think it has to be very um it can't be all of a sudden. It definitely has to have the kind of, like, kind of slow burn. This is kind of like the roadmap, and they have to explain it. And honestly, if they end up doing that, I would definitely back them up. But it won't be the popular opinion. But but from what I've seen, there's just as many players that are tired of the power creep than than players who are going to complain about the refund. Thing, or 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 nerfing thing and then expecting a refund it, it feels about 50 50. uh so let me catch up on the time costing in a character can be comparable i think the problem with nerfs is they have went almost three years without them uh yeah, I know, I don't, you know, like with the collective minds here, we're, we're not going to solve it tonight. Plus the fact that even if we do come up with a solution, is Smallgate going to do it, right? Because, because, like, unless not nerfing ends up making them lose players and therefore lose money, it is really not going to change, right? Because the formula so far is working. So they're just going to keep at it. But they may lose some players who have an issue with the power creep or get burnt out from the power creep but like i said the thing is like every game like if it has enough players it's not gonna die and and there's there's always gonna be newer players saying that hey it's my first week on epic 7 what should i pull for like there's always gonna be new players getting into the game so a new player with fresh eyes going into the game at whatever state it's at they're going to play for how many ever years as long as they like the game. Hey, hey so, uh, Everdream, thanks for the follow. E7, abuse rock, paper, scissors, balance. And if you nerf one, all others are indirectly better. But that's the same. You're, you're right. You're right. Um, but it's the same of buffing one character, right? 
others get worse too. <laughs> like it's 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 the same situation, right? But this is what we mean by balance, right? Because like if you if you move something, the other side starts like tipping. Um, but but it's more of like I think I think they need a strategy behind it. Like people have to understand there are always going to be meta characters in any mode, whether it is a nerfing buff, like buffing nerfing kind of balance patch, or if it's just a buffing patch. There's always going to be meta characters. You're not going to get out of that. So if people are tired of the like the dominant Rimuru, like whatever, I don't even know what the meta is right now in L RTA, like Bellion and Ran Cecilia, they got to get used to the fact you're always going to have some cancer selections, right? So, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about like, like for the longevity of the game itself, for the devs to not create you know, I mean, if you guys did Abyss like 110 to 120 or whatever, or 111 to 120, you know how long those skill descriptions are, right? I ended up beating 120 just strictly on stream chat. I do hey, not... Hey guys. Uh, Lord touch me. Lord touch me? Lord touch me? I don't want to touch you, but hey, thanks for the follow. Um, yeah, you can't compl yeah, you can't please everybody. So the, 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 the solution we want to drive to is not we want to please everybody. It's really what's best for the devs in terms of them not creating essay-like tooltips, skill descriptions like we see in the Abyss bosses. Because that's, that's really what's going to happen. I did a video a couple months ago comparing a Ravi before she was buffed, just the S2. The description is 33% longer. Yeah, it's 33% longer. Like you can't... There's things you can't escape, and I don't want tooltips to be so inflated. It's 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 a sign of uh, not a good sign, not a good sign. <laughs> Holy touch! No, it doesn't say Max. It's it's Lord Touch Me, I think, because it says X Lord Touch Me X, right? But I mean, I would, I, I guess, I guess I would say X Lord Touch Max. I, I think that'd be better. Cause if I kept, if I keep saying Lord Touch Me, I mean, we're going to get out of context clips. Yeah, now you see <laughs> like Rimuru skill description. Look, I don't even, I don't like, you know, once I have the mechanics like memorized, I don't want to look at the skill descriptions anymore because it is quite a long read. And for those who know me, I don't like reading. Especially at a small font, like if you just tell me what it does in a too long, too long didn't read summary, I'm okay with it as long as I know how it works. I don't want to read the tooltips; it's too much. Uh, on the topic of buff, I think Smilegate has this issue: either massively overbuffing users or not buffing them enough. Why is there nothing in between? So, so the issue, <laughs> yeah, RBTL by the way, <laughs> RBTL not really reading between the lines, but not really. Um. No, the, the the issue with this this is this is this is normal, right? But it's because, like I said, some characters, it like once you over buff them, there are just some characters that's gonna suffer way more than they would, right? So like it doesn't matter whether or not a buff is really good or not. There's going to be an issue with other characters just suffering, right? So basically, in other words, the better the buff is on one character the weaker another character becomes the ones that the 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 buff character counters basically um and so you can't get that right the entire time plus the, the fact is like again i suggest that they do play testing i don't think they can do it after realizing like the limiteds what we've got in the streak then the triple ee's released then the buff patches every month they they can't keep up with even play test because Let's say they do all the buffs in advance, like they they do their design, and then they actually like get dip, get players to play test it, or if they hire a team to play test it, like let's say it takes a week. That's one week deeper into the schedule that they've already set, right? Um, and, and so it's very very hard. Uh, Dayzai one v nine. Have you ever heard of the game? Oh my OG. I think E seven should learn from the PV in that game. Uh, you know what? I have a a constant viewer that comes to my stream and tells me to play it all the time. It's a card game, isn't it? I'm not quite sure, but uh, he 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 told me to play it many times. I've never played it though. <clears throat> but yeah, to to that comment, I did already reply. But yes, basically, I think they don't have enough time. 
I don't think they have enough time. And for whatever reason, I think Epic Seven had did a really, really good job in year one, year two. And honestly, they, they are doing still a really good job. With what they have to do, they're doing a really good job. And I think we have very high expectations of Epic Seven. When I start when I when I went on this trend a couple weeks ago of just playing other games. And so I just want to see other gacha games. I started playing and I'm just like, yeah, no, Epic 7 is still really good. I'm just really burnt out of Epic 7. So it's not Epic 7's issue, but other games are not getting it even close to Epic 7. You know what I mean? So like, there's a sense where I'm like, okay, I, I want to forgive them. But when we're talking about strictly, okay, devs, two players, let's have a conversation. They have an issue on their hands. This is not comparing to other games on their market because that's a totally different discussion. Epic 7 exceeds in very, very different like many things that other games may have something that's really good, but it's not that good. It's not a card base. Oh, wait, it's not a card game. Oh, it's a turn based. I see. I should feel they should do playtesting. I felt that was the reason Landy came out disappointed and then had to buffer. Mihoyo actually playtested their new characters in Genshin and Honkai. But, 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 um, I don't know about Honkai's release times, but Genshin releases very slow, right? So like, this is, this is what I mean, like in terms of a schedule, it's way easier to to do that, right? Epic 7... The IP is pretty big, so it has multiple game, even MOBA? Oh, really? Okay, okay. I really got you, but it doesn't matter if they start insane power group with no balance. Yeah, Jen is that. Hey, man, welcome to stream. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you you feel it too, huh? And so all the content creators, I think, I think have the similar feeling. No, I don't know. No, no. What am I saying? Not just the content creators. Most players, honestly, just just feel it. PVE game balancing versus PVE game balancing, whole different world. I I do agree with that. I actually forgot. I forgot Genshin is a PVE only, and Honkai too. I think. You're beyond fed up with this me meta and power here? Really? But you're still so cheerful on your RTA streams. <laughs> That's good to know though. That's good to know. Um I'm I I've always I've I've always accepted the fact that you're really not gonna escape it, right? Every season there is some kind of cancerous meta. That's that's how I get soulless, but I don't play as much RTA as you guys. So I I, I can't You guys have better like I would say you guys have better say. It's it's like it's like someone, it's like someone. You're losing it so you're losing it so much, really. Oh, I'm losing it watching you lose it. The meta power group is why I quit tournaments. Consisting of oh look another first pick room root building. While who expected that? That is true. That is hundred percent true. And with ML Lilius and that's not gonna help. I I I, I agree. I agree. Last year is currently completely inept in understanding how to balance new releases. Every non-limited non-ML5 is just garbage unless it's something like Politis. But, but, uh, I, I don't know when you tuned in, Genizad, or from the beginning, but my... Uh, I, I logically think that it has to kind of be that way. Otherwise, if they, again, they're not nerfing, it's just gonna power creep even faster, right? So like, like I, I use Zahawk as the example because like Zahawk is a good character, but you don't need him. Um, and so therefore he he's I would say he's kind of neutral in sort of power creep. Uh, uh, arguably speaking, he's still very power crept because the power the amount of damage he can do. But really, realistically, you don't need him. But maybe it's just in this meta. But. Yeah, there's no there's no real easy solution. I I would definitely I would definitely say that I w I at this point I would honestly just feel better if they tried to nerf and just ignored the complainers. I think they should give it a shot. Um and and if if that does somehow, you know, make people not want to whale as much, I I don't know. I think I think honestly whales will always be whales. I mean, you got whales whaling on idle games that do not need you to whale but they are just they just want to whale so i don't think they're, they're i don't think their money is gonna really suffer much it might just be different people paying that's all but I, I honestly think that they should really give it a try um 
I don't mind if they nerf it they and don't give a selector, it just allows to reset the character. Quite Sour, I agree with that too. I think Molar Gore investment is all I care about. It's a gotcha game, so if you spent on polling, you already knew what you're getting into. The problem is they make one character, like let's say AOL, so to beat that you need insane counters that power creep cleanses like Kyle again. How can they power creep the Right, yes. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I, 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 okay, I see, I see. Yeah, throughout the, throughout the, the hero releases, like my commentary on it was always like, when it's too powerful, I always say, oh, this is really bad news, right? Um, because we know it won't nerf, but on the, but they on the objective side, the characters are really good, right? So, <laughs> so it's it's really hard. Like on one side, it's like the economy is not good, this is not healthy. But on the other side, it's like these characters are really good, so you should pull for them. But then that's kind of annoying too. So, remove AOL building, remove Kaurik, and restart balance from then on. Do you think just those? Do you think just those? So with those out of the equation, you think it's handleable with like the A Ravi with Violet with Rem and stuff? Like like so so like once once you knock out like the the the, the king of the hill, there's gonna be the next one, right? That's what I mean. I I don't know. I do, I don't I don't know if it was like remove a character and then restart because they have to keep releasing new characters, right? And then new characters either they have the same kits as other characters or shared overlapping kits. They have to create something new. I do I did believe that Bellion was way too powerful. The Souls thing was really annoying to me. AOL is way too powerful. Rimru was unexpected to me and and I I got taught a lesson. I underestimated Rimru. He is way too strong too. Violet hurts all ice units forever and Rem hurts all AoE forever. Okay, fine. If you put in that sense... Yeah, yeah, I, I, that's... That's that's more balanced, I suppose, yeah. I mean, this is why Violet kind of just ended up being not so much first pick anymore. He's like, those two are exactly where they need to be right now. But I wonder... If the new characters have anything to do with it, or the new buffs, right? Crazy is imagine Rance is here like a year ago. It would literally be impossible to ever beat. The only way to even fight new stuff is dummy is like Rem and Violet. Yeah, yeah, true. Make Kirik great again? Honestly, the soul thing is so toxic. They should have made it so you can't soul burn with Belly on the field. Once you kill it, you have access to your soul. Oh, to the soul gained? Yeah. I, I mean there were there were multiple solutions that I was thinking about that time. I was like Yeah, just make it or, or someone said in Summoner's War there was a there was a character. I've never played it. There was a character that limits the speed of everyone on the field, right? So I'm like, oh, that's actually really good. So like, if you choose Belly and no one gets souls, that's fair. But no, it's one-sided. So, <laughs> okay. Yeah it's, yeah, it's called Leo. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, one of my one of my viewers is like a summoners were like, so he compares it and like what works there and stuff like that. So he was saying that it 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 worked. So it's a strategy to slow down everybody. So the, the souls thing for Belly would have worked, I think. Like conceptually, so like you would be handicapping yourself at the same time handicapping the the opponents. So it's a it's more of a strategy instead of you get no souls now, right? But blows my mind they make passes just straight up negate mechanics and it's only your opponent. Yes, no, dude, dude, I was I was on the I was like absolutely like what the frick? That was just like seal mechanic was like block passes but there's still proc rate and effect resist check and i was like i was already having like that's already really powerful but at least there's rng but then when belling came out i'm like this is a this is a global mechanic this is a mechanic not about characters this is a this is literally like like a character able to disable your yield button or something like that you know what i mean it's outside of the characters itself it's it's a global mechanic in the game it's crazy. I was very, very shocked that they allowed it. I was hoping they nerfed it. I said it on multiple of my streams and stuff. You can wrap their smooth, shiny brains around it. Polish and Solitaria, Bellion have the worst design passives ever. Solitaria... Soli Solitarias, I would accept more because of the limited characters are focused and that is targeting... Okay, I, I know your argument, Genizad, is that the, the tar targeting full mechanics. Yeah, that is very, very powerful. 
um bellions was another issue for me completely just because that was a global mechanic that wasn't a character mechanic that was like way beyond but yeah you're you're right yeah there it's lazy i agree and 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 uh and uh rimuru's technically is on the same thing right he, any buff he gets the buff um at least he doesn't strip it i guess <laughs> if he strips it if he steals it then that's just that's a whole other issue but yeah the the copying copying thing is actually a global mechanic to you technically like a politis solitary level should be i think they should try it they should try things that's all i don't think i don't think anybody can come up with a solution here um because i i i do believe the issue is that like you come up with one solution there's going to be other problems but it's just like i guess what problems are easier to easier to deal with i guess and what problems i don't know it's, it's hard it's, it's a really tough thing fully acknowledge i'm no game dev but i'm pretty sure that i could come up with a better balance patch in a week than there in two months I, I won't argue with you i won't argue with you not because i think you're right but just because i don't think there's a point arguing it um i i feel that your your response is because you're still you're still very like you know, look there's like there's, there's the saying right like you can't be angry at something unless you love it right um and and maybe i'm just more burnt out i just i'm just tired of even to talk like being emotionally invested <laughs> i guess like i know the issues are there i just i just don't i just don't feel emotionally invested into critiquing it now i love the game but i every hate it so <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, so I, I would I would definitely say yeah, I can see it. You love the game and that's why you care about it more. That that's 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 exactly it. That, that that's good to see, right? And I, I really do hope that Epic Seven is just like open years about it. And hopefully they have people who are just like Cause the thing is like if they listen to everybody's commentary, it's just not gonna get anywhere, right? But hopefully there are some things that they can see like okay this is a trend right people are burnt out like why are they burnt out and hopefully they they go to one of your streams or you know and you're talking about it and they hear it hopefully i don't know i don't know about the other streamers like the korean streamers and stuff i wonder if they talk about this kind of stuff i can't understand korean at all so i i don't know the commentary um Patrick just passive grants an extra turn when attacked by skill. They can't be countered. Honestly, at this point, I mean, people are joking about the uh, like the anti 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 revive and whatever, like the double negative, triple negative. It's probably not going to be too surprising. I won't be surprised when if that ever comes. There's an artifact for that called Butterfly Mandolin. True, <laughs> ten percent proc rate though. They say they use statistics instead to determine balance patches, which is baffling because they're so off the mark. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't believe they do. I don't believe they do. Ever since they did like uh, some of the buffs on the heroes, like so, so for example, like Op Sig, Op Sig buff reminded me of Athletica buff back when Athletica was meta. It was like it's unneeded, right? But it definitely, it definitely made people use them more. But the Op Sig one was like definitely not needed. She did it what she, she did what she needed to do. I didn't know. I don't know about the. Uh, I don't necessarily know about the. Uh, if they have a barrier, you 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 ignore resist and stuff like that. I don't know if that was needed, but it's hundred percent. It's not. It's not based on. Well, maybe some of it is based on some s statistics, but we don't know what those are. We don't know what the statistic is, but they definitely they definitely showed their cards when some of the buffs did not make sense at all. I, I agree. The thing is, the optic buff. So many people have thought. She was bad. The lower you were, the more you wanted it. Do attack is a crap. Yeah, uh, do attack. Ah, uh, I, I mean, I can, I can complain all day with like, like I, I'm still in placements in World Arena right now, and I, I, I decided I probably not going to try at all this season. Um, uh, like maybe champion at the most. Uh, just because, well, it was my fault, I guess, but I, I, I blame the game still. <laughs> Rimuru S3 didn't register, and it did S1 instead, and I lost. And I'm just like, I, I, I'm done. Like, I was already kind of burnt out anyway, but that, that loss was like, I think, I'm just kind of done. But yeah, if you're, if you're really competitive, the dual attacks, 
and other mechanics like that is is kind of head scratchy. So someone can win you completely based on luck without any uh any skill, even within the draft. A triple attack? Yeah, full team full team dives in. You know, I got a big crowd. I gotta appreciate I gotta pass on the goodwill from Val Valkyria. Um uh, let me see who's streaming. Let's go uh let's go raid someone. 